Oh, there's something on a podcast that I listened to called The Overanalyzers that really stuck out to me and is really the crux of like every conversation on motivation and work ethic ever. I've been gaining some weight in the past few months. It's really bumming me out. And her sister said, oh, well, you should go on a diet and start exercising. And she said, yeah, no shit. The problem is not knowing what to do. It's finding the inner drive to actually want to do it. Everybody knows what they should be doing, more or less. But it's how do you make it so that you actually want to do it every single day. Any notion about how it's willpower and you just gotta dig deep and find the way to do it and you gotta suffer through it for your whole life, no. Suffering is only for short sprints when you really need to get something done. If you want to have a good life and also be able to accomplish good things, you gotta find a way for you to actually want to do the things that you wanna do. This right here is an interesting little thing. So the goal here was to have a regular microphone hooked up and also our two wireless receivers hooked up. So at any given moment, we can just switch over and say, okay, everybody turn on your mics. I plug in the wireless receivers and then we can do a walk and talk shot like this where the two wireless receivers are sending audio to the camera. And then as soon as everybody's done with that, we just switch back like so and we're using the regular shotgun microphone. This is not the microphone we normally use. Let's see what that one looks like though. Okay, so somehow I managed to not record audio here. So I was saying that it's a little bit bulky and it also interrupts the movement of the steady cam itself just a little bit. So then I thought about it a little more and I was like, wait a minute, why don't I just clip the wireless receivers to the microphone when we're not using that microphone? I gotta get better at thinking about things before I buy something. You know, just like, oh, this will probably fix the problem. No, think about it for a little while, man. Use this mic most of the time, and then when we want to do the wireless, just clip these onto this mic. That definitely makes the most sense. Robbie, why don't you just think about it, man? Wait a minute. You think about it a little more, and then it becomes painfully obvious the right thing to do is to use Velcro. Well, actually, first of all, for tripod situations, we can just clip the two receivers right onto this microphone. Oh, look how nice that is. Look how nice that is. That's perfect. For the steady cam, we can just get some Velcro and maybe put it like right here. Oh, you know, I could put something else and I could just go like that. Yes. For whatever reason, I'm pretty averse to DIY solutions because I hate how they're just like cobbled together and they never do exactly what you want them to do. But other times it makes a lot of sense to just do the DIY solution. The DIY solution sometimes is even, it might even be better. Yes, and then put another one right there. Oh, that is so excellent. Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Oh. So this is essentially very close to the setup that we already use. Microphone right here, camera right here. But now we have the secret of two wireless receivers just attached to the Steadicam. Oh man, this is gonna be so great. I'm just gonna untwist these. Plug this in. Oh, come on. This is gonna be so fantastic. Our audio quality is gonna be really good for episode number 50. We actually used lavalier mics for some of the earlier episodes and I was re-watching those the other day and I was like, it is not acceptable that our audio quality used to be better. The reason we stopped is because they're a huge pain. If you record three different people on separate recorders and then have to sync them all afterwards, that will definitely work. Oh man, I'm so excited. Oh man! Okay, well you guys know how I love to do me some rearranging. I just love fixing little nagging problems that aren't quite obvious until you've done something a lot of times. Like the whole audio problem, I've been thinking about it for a long time now. And part of the reason why we haven't been using more than just the on-camera microphone is because there's other things you can do. You can get closer to the mic, you can position people better. When you get into other solutions like external microphones, you have to balance like the realisticness of it. Are you actually going to have the energy and the ability to record properly 
every single time on three separate recorders. So a lot of how I find out about new camera stuff is just from YouTube. And the biggest mistake that I see people making, whether it be the video creators themselves or the people commenting, is that they don't take into account what is actually realistic. For example, this camera has a flip screen so I can look at myself right here. People told me many times like, oh, just get an external monitor. You, anybody who says to get an external monitor has never actually filmed anything. The word I'm looking for is practicality. There's so many solutions to so many things, but is how practical is it for what you're trying to shoot? Unless you're in this perfect studio environment where the camera never moves, you can always be behind the camera and you have control over everything in temperature controlled rooms. So many of the solutions just do not work, which is why I'm so happy that I think I've got a solution to our audio problems that is realistic, doable, usable. But anyways, that's a peek into the process that I've gone through for lots of different things many times. You just usually don't see it on camera, but this was kind of like a real time figuring something out on camera. Anyways, I got some other nagging stuff off of my plate today. Whenever I have nagging stuff, on my plate that I have not gotten rid of. I can't do anything. It's in the back of my mind, killing me. And now that I've gotten that out of the way and the episode is done, I feel so free. However, that is going to do it for today's vlog. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this microphone stuff is not too boring and I hope at least somebody got some ideas for their own setup. Maybe not. Uh, but thank you for watching. Hope you're having a good one. I'll see you in the next one. Today, we would be driving to the top of the mountain to save Robbie and Thomas from destroying their legs. And as per usual, Thomas would be the one taking the wheel. Well, Thomas, our lives are in your hands. Uh-oh. Thomas goes craning off the edge. <laughs> I'm sorry I was wrong! <laughs> and then right before we die, we go, You're not forgiven, Thomas! <laughs> Does it cost extra per passenger? Quick, hide. <laughs> I'm just a pair of pants. <laughs> Oh, dude, this is so nice. You could sit on these picnic tables, <laughs> have a beautiful view of that pond and the mountains, and eat your charcuterie. Man, I can see why people come here during the fall. Yeah. Nice. We're just a little bit too early, but this is yeah. really nice. Imagine you come back from a golf game, eat charcuterie, <laughs> your chauffeur drives you around. <laughs> we aren't much ones for luxury. Driving up a mountain after staying in a hotel is about as good as it gets with us. I, 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 also, I also got that bumper sticker last time too. All right, this is going on my car then. <laughs> Driving down instruction says to drive down in lowest gear. Do not coast down in neutral. <laughs> Why would someone coast down in neutral? They'd just be like, I wonder what speed I'll be by the time I get to the bottom <laughs> if I just let it coast all the way down. And it's pretty steep. It's not like you're just kind of casually going up. Yeah. Feeling like I'm in an airplane taking off. Before I visited the Northeast in New England, I would never have thought of it as like a super mountains region. Like New Hampshire or Vermont, I just think of rolling hills with like trees and stuff, but never these huge giant Rocky Mountains. Yeah, these are the real Rocky Mountains. So what's interesting is when we were down at the bottom, most everything was still green. You had some trees changing colors, but as we go higher, you start to see more trees changing colors. North. As we drove higher, we were treated to dramatic views of distant mountains, and we saw more flashes of leaves that had turned yellow. 